In this book, God and Evolution, uh, the contributors and I, we wanted to focus on what we think are the central issues uh, alive in the debate, both about Darwinism, about intelligent design, and about what's called theistic evolution. Uh, everybody knows at an intuitive level that there's some kind of tension or some kind of conflict between what most people believe about God and what most people believe uh, about Darwinian evolution. But it's often poorly defined. I mean, you know, a lot of people spend a whole lot of time focused on these really detailed exegetical questions from Genesis 1 or something like that. Uh, I think, in fact, what you have to do is you have to look at the, the sort of central aspects of what it means to be a theist. What does theism mean? What does it entail? And what does the mainstream neo-Darwinian uh, theory of evolution claim and entail? If everyone's allowed to just sort of create private definitions of words in their heads, so uh, that when I say evolution, what I mean is a a purposeful teleological process of something that works itself out over time but that was present in the beginning. Well sure, theistic evolution, that's easy, right? Because I've just defined evolution in a totally theological and teleological sense. The problem is, is that you, you've got to focus on what the theorists themselves mean by the word evolution. It doesn't just mean change over time, it doesn't just mean common descent. It, it certainly doesn't mean this progressive or teleological idea like it meant, say, you know, 150 years ago. When English speakers use, use the word evolution, they usually mean neo-Darwinian evolution, which means that all the adaptive complexity you see is the result of random genetic mutations acted on by natural selection, and they mean that as an impersonal and purposeless process. So when they say random, that's not just some mathematical term that's perfectly compatible with a view of God's providence. They mean purposeless. And that's the problem. It's a logical problem. Not even God can direct an undirected process. He can't have purposes for a purposeless process. This is just straightforward logic. So if you want to integrate your understanding of God and your understanding of evolution, you got to get the meanings of the term straight. Uh, you, and you don't want to have sort of private definitions of these words. And then I think you can do some real fruitful thinking and exploring. It's not as if every aspect of the word of God and every aspect of the word evolution are incompatible. It's that the general sort of orthodox meanings of theism and neo-Darwinian evolution as understood by the theorists themselves are incompatible. And that's the thing, frankly, that I think a lot of theistic evolutionists don't want to face squarely. There are probably two dozen books on theistic evolution, broadly construed, that have been written in the last 10 years or so. Uh, in fact, it's sort of a cottage industry. But if you read a lot of these books, what you discover is that way too many people are trying to defend some version of theistic evolution, and it ends up being an exercise in ambiguity. It's almost as if the purpose of the book is to confuse you so that there's fog and fuzz and uh, ambiguity because they don't frankly want to face the, the key uh, source of conflict. It would be very nice if the mainstream uh, view of evolution and our religious beliefs were perfectly compatible. It's not like science and religion are intrinsically at war, but it's certainly possible that some content in a, a particular prevalent theory could conflict with certain religious views. And I think that's what we need to face squarely. So what God and Evolution does that most of the books on theistic evolution don't do is that we focus very squarely on the key issues and we, if anything, try to clarify uh, rather than muddy the waters in this debate.